towers collapsed, he said, there went 300 firefighters, which was a big number. I mean, that's something, how do you wrap your mind around? I looked and all I saw was these lifeless blue eyes. We had a nine-year-old girl who hung herself. Either I'm going to run out of air and asphyxiate and die, or I'm going to burn. I make it four or five feet inside the building and he backed up to me and took his mask off and said, I can't, I can't do this, and he collapsed in cardiac arrest in my arms. Throughout these last 15 years being in the field, I have continued to see the need to serve first responders. First responders see things that many times in a day that civilians do not see in their lifetimes. My captain had re-emerged into the fire, put himself in harm's way, found me, grabbed me, literally and figuratively snapped me back into reality and led me out of the house. And I just eluded and escaped death. I should have been the happiest, the luckiest person alive, and I wasn't. I was terrified. And the other thing that bothered me too was, why did I freeze? It's important to have the clinical component because there's so many pieces involved as far as if there's high risk behavior that needs to be assessed, if there's a clinical concern that might need to be questioned. Downward spiral, spiral I had in my marriage that I wasn't the best husband as I continued to probably not deal with the emotions that I was feeling. Not necessarily talking about or dealing with things led to difficulty in my family. I was not very patient, tried to run my house like a firehouse, uh, and was not providing the best example for my, for my children. I have three children. I was dealing with a ton of shame. I was worried about going back to the fire station and thinking, well, they're gonna have this perception of me of there's the guy that can't handle it. For many, many years, I held this guilt, probably what you would call survivor's guilt. If I had to classify, one, one sharp turn was a suicide in our department. That was about eight years ago. It was somebody that we never thought would ever consider that. So we can't go through this career healthy thinking that we're only the best parts of us, but we're only that superhero. We have to also recognize that the parts where we struggle are absolutely true too. My name is Matt Olson. I'm the executive director of the Illinois Firefighter Peer Support. The peer supporters make up the nuts and bolts of what we do, and we have just under 170 now, and they actually go out and provide the peer support. When we're there for each other in this way, we can all be better off and be safe. And therefore, for them to make it safe and make it matter, it's important for them to do wellness year long, physical wellness, mental health wellness, so that if things are going great, they can keep it going great. And if things aren't going well, then they can certainly take those steps to get back on the track they want to be on. We are here to help you in any way possible. The way that we have Illinois Firefighter Peer Support set up right now, so Dr. McKinnis makes sure that clinically we're appropriate. So we divided Illinois Firefighter Peer Support up two ways, where we have a northern regional coordinator and then a central and southern. And they connect with the peer supporters who exist down there to make sure that opportunities to provide peer support are brought to them. Many ways, our primary mission here with Illinois Firefighter Peer Support is to share the concept of peer support. So let's find this balance. Let's help you deal with it on your own terms because everybody has to deal with it. Because if you do sweep it under the rug, sooner or later, something's gonna snap. My mom's suicide is something that I carry around with me every day. If I could be there for somebody else to help them get through something like that, then I feel like we're doing our jobs. We spend our lives taking care of other people and it's our duty to take care of each other. And I feel like this is a great opportunity for all of us to start doing that. I think with firemen, we're afraid to get emotional. It is, it's okay. You know, just having that conversation, being able to say, dump everything out to somebody who does your job. And that guy sitting on the other side will say, I get it, you know, it's normal. What you're going through is not anything new necessarily. And what you've done to get to this point is very strong and courageous to stand up and say, I need help. Illinois Firefighter Peer Support was created to give firefighters a place to go where it's safe to recognize that they're human. And we need to see that, we need to be aware of that, we need to share that with each other. And we need to create a place where firefighters are okay understanding and accepting their human status. The best way that I can put it is that the echoes of the mind are going to never let you forget. But in the face of adversity, you always have to have the courage 
to take the high road.